before we go out to lay the loop, uh, I just wanted to run you quickly through some of the tools we'll be using. And today I'll be using a PDA7 DD version. Um, normally you would lay a loop with cable, but obviously we're laying it on the floor and we don't want it visible under the carpet. So we're using this copper flat tape. This is flat 2005. To seal that down onto the floor, we're also going to be using this uh, warning tape, which we'll put over the top and hopefully should stop any carpet fitters from cutting through it. At the end of the installation, we'll be testing loop using the signal generator to create the tones that we need. And then we'll go out into the loop with the FOS meter to uh, measure their field strength and the frequency response. Looking at the back of the PDA7, it's uh, easy to see where everything goes. We've got a microphone input first, and then we've got a line level input. That's also where we're going to be putting in the uh, sine wave generator, the tones we need to test the system. Then we've got an outreach plate connector, we've got a line out and a relay out for showing fault reporting. But the main part of this is obviously the loop outputs there. It's a phase shifting amp, so there's two outputs. Um, most of the designs that we issue come with the uh, loops drawn in red and green, so loop one usually is the first loop, the green loop. It's a complete turn of loop cable and then loop two comes out, a complete turn of loop cable on, on loop two. All the phase shifting is done within the actual unit itself. Okay, before we start laying the loop, it's important to um, evaluate how suitable the floor is. And sometimes you, you won't get a floor as clean as this. Sometimes it'll be quite dirty and there'll be bits, so you need to sweep it. And maybe you could consider using a roller and some uh, glue or bonding agent that will go down first. Um, to stick the loop cable to the floor. But in this case, it's quite a clean floor, so we don't need to do that. We're just going to lay the copper straight out on top of the floor. We need to identify our starting position, which is usually a metre in and out from the corner where you want to start. We then run the first run of cable, which is called the baseline. That's laid along the long side of the room, as we see here. We then show a two metre wide section of loop, which is this first rectangle. Next we've got 3.2 metre spacings, which is where the next 2 metre rectangle starts. And then a third rectangle of 2 metres, which is again 3.2 metres away from the previous one. Now the second loop is laid out in exactly the same pattern, but it's offset by half of the distance between them. So the second loop starts at 1.6, and then it's two meters and a 3.2 meter gap to the next two meter loop. What's interesting is in this simplified low spill array, the pattern doesn't change even when dealing with larger areas. So you could have six greens and five reds, it depends on the size of the room that you're covering. If we were to transfer this into a sports hall for example, this two metre section might be five metres, which is the largest rectangle we'll use on a steel reinforced floor. So you could have a five metre rectangle with an eight metre spacing between them and then an offset of four metres, which is obviously half of the eight metre reading. It is possible to add a smaller one metre loop at the end to create a very low spill system. If, for example, you have classrooms very close to the wall. And now we're going to test the system. OK, so now we've set up the loop according to the British standard. The very last thing we need to do is to make sure that the sound that's coming from it is acceptable to the hearing aid users. So I like to do a loop listener test where I switch onto the loop listener section on here. I put the headphones on and I walk around the loop just to make sure that the, everything's sounding OK. OK, now we're taking a frequency response, 100 hertz, 1 kilohertz and 5 kilohertz. And I've taken a sample here. We're at minus 5, minus 4, minus 3. What we're looking for is a, a variation of about 3 dB. So you can see that we're uh, within that now. So that would be a pass according to the British standard. Mm -hmm. 